Hey guys, Flaccid Baron here, and today I'm going to show you the best way to level up daggers. As you can see, I have a ton of spec in daggers, and I want to help you get here one day. I will be showing you the best ways to level up each type of dagger, starting with one-handed dagger and going all the way to the Avalonian dagger. Since I'm already max spec in daggers, I will be nerfing myself by only using flat four during this video. However, I do recommend that you use the best gear you can for this. I will also only be using blue and yellow zones to remain 100% safe, but for you guys, once you reach Reaver level 5, you should probably head to the red zone and start getting better fame. Don't just stay in the safe zones your whole life in this game. It's super, super boring. Some daggers will be better than others for racking up fame quickly. So let's get started with the one-handed dagger. First, let's go over the build. This is the build I will be using. And these are the abilities. For one-handed dagger, the best way to level it is solo dungeons. The basic rotation of abilities is R to activate your jacket, then F to give yourself a damage boost, then W for even more damage amp, then E to activate your weapon. This should melt any single target enemy very, very quickly. And once your enemy is defeated, simply use D to get your cooldowns back faster and rinse and repeat. This build should make short work of any solo dungeon, and to be honest, it's not that bad for PvP either. Now, let's go over the pros and the cons of using a one-handed dagger for fame farming. The pros are, it's one of the best weapons to use while PvEing. It has extremely high single target damage, and it has tons of sustain when you have your E activated. The cons are, it's not so great against a group of mobs, but that's not that bad. Um, and that's it. Like I said, it's one of the best weapons for PvP out there, so definitely give it a try for leveling up daggers. The next two daggers in the dagger tree are the dagger pair and the claws. And these weapons have no business whatsoever being used in PvE. That said, if you really want to try them, here are some builds you can use in solo dungeons. But again, I really wouldn't recommend to use these. They are going to be so slow to clear and just not worth it. Use fame credits or something else to level these up, or tomes or something. Next on the list is my favorite weapon in the game, and that is the Bloodletter. This weapon is amazing in PvP and actually quite decent in PvE as well. There are two main ways I would use to level up my Bloodletter. Open world mobs and solo dungeons. Here is the build for fame farming the Bloodletter in the open world. The method I use for fame farming in the open world is mob camps. Mob camps are groups of open world mobs that spawn together. The reason I use mob camps is to get as much fame as possible by killing multiple mobs at once. The tactic for doing these camps is simple. One, ride around until you find a group of two to six mobs. Two, using your horse aggro them and group them up. Three, dismount and use your abilities in this order. Q, W, then E. This should kill most mob packs if you are wearing decent gear, but if it doesn't, just auto attack the remaining HP off of the mobs. Once the mobs are dead, simply remount and look for another pack. Don't forget to pick up the silver. Open world mobs drop a decent amount of silver, so don't just leave it chilling on the floor. Also, a little side note, if you're wondering why we are using this build, it is to maximize damage. Maidrobe has the highest damage bonus in the game, and you gain further damage bonus by using damage amp passives on cloth shoes and helmets. So make sure you are using cloth shoes, cloth helmet, and a maidrobe or another high damage amp cloth armor. If solo dungeons are more of your style, here is the build for solo dungeons. If you can't afford the Muasac, some alternatives are Mistcaller for better cooldowns and a Sarcophagus for more defense. The way you clear with this build is to group up as many mobs as you can handle. Then use W, Q, D, F, and then when they're at 40% HP or two health bars, use E to go through all of the mobs for massive damage. If you're struggling to kill bosses, you can switch your Q ability to Q1. And also, if you're having mana issues, you can switch your boot ability to Energetic Sprint, which will gain you some energy back. Here are some of the pros and cons of using a Bloodletter. First, it's got big multi-target damage. You can E through an entire pack of mobs and do a ton of good damage to them. It's also really good in PvP, so while you're leveling this up, 
you're getting a good weapon for PvP. Also, it is very, very mobile. Probably one of the top five mobile weapons in the game. You always see gatherers and other people using this weapon while they're gathering because it's really good at escaping from enemies um, because it has a jump, it has a dash, it has a an E, which is another dash. So it has two dashes and a little jump um, on the Q ability. However, some cons are it is very expensive, especially if you're going for the Muasac Bloodletter combo. That can cost you a ton of money because Muasacs are very expensive and the Bloodletter itself is pretty expensive. It's not super expensive, but it's still pretty expensive. This is my favorite weapon and probably the best weapon in the game, at least arguably the best weapon in the game. It's just so satisfying to execute while using the E on this weapon. And if you want to learn more about the Bloodletter or watch it in action, check out my channel. I have tons of videos about the Bloodletter and daggers in general. I also stream on Twitch, so feel free to stop by and ask me any questions you have about daggers or about Albion in general. I love seeing new chatters, and I will always try to help them as much as I can. All right, next up is the Demon Fang, or as I like to call it, the Demon Wang. This is the build I will be using to level Demon Wang. As you can see, it's very similar to the other open world mob clearing builds we have in this video. The only real difference is the order of abilities used to clear the mob camps. The order is Q, W, E, E, and if there's still a mob or two up, use E for the third time. However, using E for the third time will put the ability on a longer cooldown and it'll make you take some self damage, so be careful. The pros to using the Demon Fang are it has a massive AOE burst of damage. Also, it's one of the best ranked arena weapons, so leveling this up will help you in ranked arena. You can also use the E up to three times at once. Cons, however, are it is an expensive weapon. It seems like most of these artifact daggers are pretty expensive. Um, also, like I mentioned earlier, if you use the E three times, it does put a self-damaging damage over time on you. So you got to be careful when using all three E's, um, especially in a PvP situation, because you don't want to get your health too low in PvP. This is the weapon I prefer to use when playing ranked arena or taking out number fights in the open world. Check out this video here if you want to see the Demon Wang in action. Next up, we have a weapon that is close to my heart. It's the first weapon I got to 100 spec, and it started my Albion journey. And that weapon is the Death Givers. This is the build I'll be using to level up the Death Givers. To be honest though, leveling up Death Givers this way will be time consuming. Death Givers are not a PvE weapon. That being said though, if you still want to PvE with the Death Givers, here's a build that you can use. The tactic here is similar to the other open world builds, with one exception. While using the Death Givers, you want to make sure you get three Assassin Spirit stacks. Those are the little daggers that float around you in a circle before using the E, and then this will ensure that you can E twice, making clearing much, much faster. One of the pros for using the Death Givers is that, is that these are a good weapon in Corrupted Dungeons. So if Corrupted Dungeons is something that you want to do and you want to use Death Givers in them, then definitely level up your Death Givers and then go into the Corrupted Dungeons. They're, they're a pretty good weapon for Corrupted Dungeons. However, the cons are they are going to be slow to level up. Like I said earlier, it's not the best way to level up. They are also very expensive. And these are the most expensive one out of all the ones we've seen so far. And also... In the past, they've been nerfed several times, making them a shell of what they used to be. So if you're watching an old video of me playing Death Givers, just know that those videos are kind of out of date because the Death Givers have been nerfed so many times in the past, and it just, it really makes me sad, man. I just, I wish they weren't, I wish they weren't nerfed so much, but their Death Givers are still a really fun weapon to play, even if they aren't the best anymore. Um, I still use them from time to time in ranked arena just to, you know, ch change it up from using the Demon Wang all the time. Um, they're all, they are still one of my favorite weapons for sure. Last up in the dagger tree, we have the best ZVZ dagger, and that is the Bridled Fury. Here is a build for them. 
This has got to be the dagger I use the least because I never ever do ZVZs, but it's still decent in clearing mob packs in the open world. Basically the same tactic as mentioned previously. Group up the mobs, use QWE, rinse and repeat. Just remember that the E does launch you backwards, so be careful not to de-aggro the mobs. Well guys, that does it for this guide. I hope I taught you a little bit how to level up your dagger efficiently, since I see that asked a lot in the online forums. If you have any questions, you can come to my Discord, or come to my Twitch stream, or just leave a comment on this video and I'll try my hardest to answer it. But yeah, that's it for me guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and remember, stay soft. Thank mm -hmm. you.